This is New Cap News with Bart Pityasek. Good evening. A number of communities in the Midwest and Lakeland areas were without power this morning as frost caused power lines to sag or break. Atco Electric says a number of crews are working around the clock to fix the problem, but it's not known when everything will be fully restored. People are asked to keep back 30 feet from the sagging or downed wires and always assume power lines are energized. Lloydminster taxpayers can expect to be paying more next year. Council met yesterday to discuss the 2015 budget and landed on a tentative 10% tax increase. Also on the agenda was a funding for everything from parks and roads to the library and cultural center. City Council reporter Jeremy Thompson was there to sift through the numbers and has this report. That's carried, thank you. It was a marathon meeting for councillors as they meticulously discussed, amended and approved the city's budget for 2015. It's a lot of give and take and it's a lot of uh, trying to figure out what we have to have versus what we'd like to have and what's more important, a library or a pool or a, a improved roadway. Overall, council approved just over $53 million to be put towards projects in the city for 2015. Altogether, that would mean a 10.4% increase in taxes. But many councillors aren't happy with that number. Part of our mandate is to serve all people in this community. And, you know, some can maybe afford 10%, but many can't. And I think we have to find a balance, and that's part of our responsibility as a council. This was the first year the city asked the public for their input on the budget. They received survey results from over a thousand households who ranked city services from most to least important. Arts and culture sits in dead last. Yet City Council approved $150,000 towards new plans for the Cultural and Science Center. Councillor Goodhand was quick to defend the decision. Uh, I mean, not surprising it ranked low. I mean, when you're talking about policing and roads, you know, culture is, is going to pale in comparison to those kind of core services. On the other hand, um, as a city councillor, it's our job to make sure that, that our city has all of the pieces, not just the core services. As it stands, homeowners in Lloydminster will be shelling out an extra couple hundred dollars this year. This budget today is a guideline. We, once the assessment is out there, then we, we need to come back and reassess you know, where those things go. Well, we try and do an average and we try and go on, on, on assessments. It's a difficult number to come up with an average assessment on a home because everybody's impacted differently. It could be, the average could be around the $250 mark, but that would be on the high side. I'm quite pleased with the result here today, and we will uh, revisit uh, through assessment time and make the proper allocations so we're, we're reasonable with our ask. Council will reconvene in January to discuss possible changes to the budget. Jeremy Thompson, NewCab News. And sticking to money matters, the Lloydminster Cultural and Science Centre was placed into the capital budget yesterday. I think that facility, if anybody's been out there recently, it's, it's underutilized. Uh, there's great areas that are unusable, and uh, we can't keep putting band-aids on that facility. There are plans to renovate the museum and include design work for a new facility. About $150,000 will be allocated for it, which contributes to a small part of the overall tax increase. The Lloydminster Cultural and Science Centre is a, a needed facility, and... Um, I know it's, it has, it's had its struggles in the past, and I think we, are, we have some good, uh, good people behind it to, that, that I hope put forward a good plan going forward for it. Even if it's a struggle to fund it, and even if it's not necessarily on the top list of the taxpayers' priorities, I think as a city we need to do it. $10,000 was also included in for the budget's renovations on the Imhoff Theatre inside the LCSC. This is to develop workspace and storage when the Lloydminster Regional Archives Association moves in. And there was a heated debate on the outdoor pool during the budget talks. It is only open for 16 days. 16 days. 65 days a year. Uh, I think our money can be better spent on the facility that is open for, for more than that. I think it really misses a certain demographic, a certain age group, a certain uh, uh, area of the city that, that sees great use um, in the summer months, and I think it would be a mistake to look simply at the dollars associated with it and say 
Let's close it down, even temporarily. Councillor Jason Whiting said after a hearing from both sides of the table, some taxpayers say the outdoor pool has run its course. He hoped to use the funds elsewhere, either for a new facility or for the outdoor spray park. We figured we could um, potentially hold off for a year, uh, reassess it, uh, discuss with uh, residents and taxpayers, and, uh, and maybe look at maybe some private donors, private, private sponsorship like has been done in, in years past. But a majority of council voted the outdoor pool to be put into the capital debt. $350,000 will be used to install a membrane liner and make the facility upgrades for Saskatchewan health approval. The $350,000 will also will be paid over an estimated 10-year period. Lloyd Minster Public and Catholic School Boards have made a precedent-setting agreement as they work together with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Education for approval of a joint-use elementary school. Members from both school boards signed the special agreement at the Catholic School Board offices yesterday. Officials say the need for future expansion was what led them to working together. Saskatchewan government has sort of said that, you know, they'll look at joint facilities and have really pushed in that direction. So that sort of led us to the initial conversations and that's where it brought us to signing this memorandum. But uh, other places that have done this have uh, maintained the integrity of both systems uh, so that uh, we, we share what makes sense to share. Um, it provides efficiency. Um, but uh, each school division uh, needs to be able to uh, pr preserve their own traditions and their own values. The agreement is only in its initial phase and the board me more members say the next step will be to come up with a joint plan and discuss expansion with the city and the Saskatchewan government. At this time, it's unknown when or if a new elementary school will be built.